Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's American Flyer Trains. Thanks a lot for tuning in. For this video, I'm going to do my first ever layout tour and update. There have been a lot of changes made over the last three to four weeks with the addition of scenery and backdrops and so forth. So it kind of gives me a good reason for a layout tour and update. As you can see, let's kind of start along the back wall. I've hung a couple of blue sky backdrops to add some depth and realism. They really brighten up the back of the layout and they're inexpensive. So attaching those to just some cardboard easels in the back really made a big difference along the back of the layout. Over here in the back corner is an American Flyer lighted and whistling Barnum & Bailey Circus billboard. This is a steam locomotive sounding whistle and it's activated with a button controller. Next to that billboard is an American Flyer lighted rotating aircraft beacon. As the bulb warms, the heat rises through the fins on the top of the light fixture and it's supposed to make it turn. But it's really pretty finicky. It needs to be perfectly level, which it is not right now, and the fins need to be bent on top of the light fixture just right in order for it to turn. So just having it lit up is kind of fun on this corner. Coming over here at this end of the layout, more towards the center, is a Plasticville Railroad Station. This one has a lot of sentimental value because it's the same one my parents had on our layout under the Christmas tree when I was just a little one. I feel very lucky to still have it and able to display it here on my layout. It's far from perfect as you can see, but that's okay. Beside the station is an American Flyer operating and lighted water tower. This is also activated with a button controller to lower the water spout to simulate filling the locomotive tenders. Across from the water tower is another American Flyer lighted and op or I should not say lighted, it's not lighted, but it's a whistling billboard. This one simulates a diesel horn as only American Flyer can do. Coming around the bend and across from that billboard is another great American Flyer operating layout, or I should say operating accessory. This is Sam the Semaphore Man. This accessory can be direct wired or it can be set up to activate with track clips. And there is a button that I have hiding behind that uh, small billboard. When it's activated, Sam actually comes out of his little shed and the semaphore will drop and change from green to red. Right now I don't have it wired, but I will in the near future, I hope. Behind that and across the inside loop, is a Plasticville freight platform and it's usually found in use near or next to a Plasticville railroad station as you can see there. Other Plasticville structures that I've put on the layout include the church, a couple of Cape Cod homes, one with a red roof, one with a gray roof, and another Plasticville rail station and freight platform. And this one I purchased just a couple of years ago. It's in way better condition than the original one that we first looked at. As you can see, I've also added lighting to the Plasticville structures using battery-operated puck lights. They're the perfect size to fit inside and give some of the buildings a little bit of life. This is what the puck lights look like. 
I got a pack of six on Amazon for a very little amount of money. They're ba battery operated with AA batteries. An interesting note about Plasticville buildings is that they're actually S scale or 164th. But the doors and the windows on them are O scale or 148th. So Plasticville actually did this to be able to cover both markets, American Flyer and Lionel model railroads. It's kind of genius. We look across the back. There's an American Flyer lighted trestle bridge. To the right of that is the lighted yard tower. And to the right of that is the lighted switch tower. And I have those three accessories direct wired and connected just to a small transformer I've tucked in the corner. Coming around to this end of the layout, I have another American Flyer operating billboard. This one you can see flips back and forth, kind of like a more modern billboard, between uh, Christmas Eve season's greeting panels and the American Flyer panels. I also have a bubbling and lighted water tower. Uh, once it warms up enough, it'll actually bubble in that tube. It hasn't gotten warm yet. And then you can see behind it, I've added a mountain backdrop. And this is on a movable privacy screen. So as I'm taking photos or videos of my layout and posting them, I can move this around to the far ends of the layout and the front from where I'm filming from right now. And just to add some privacy as well as some depth. So pretty much all of the buildings and accessories have been on the layout since I set it up. The big change is the addition of scenery. I really had not planned on adding any real amount of scenery to my layout because I'm in the process, or at least planning stages, of designing a larger and more permanent layout. More to come on that later. But while we're talking about scenery, I, I want to take a moment and give a shout out to Bobby, who most of you probably know better as CWF Trains on Instagram and YouTube. Last month in January, he had made a suggestion and encouraged me to add some scenery. So I kind of thought about it, and I thought, well, why not? And I really enjoy it. So thanks very much, Bobby. I really appreciate you putting that in my head. If you don't already follow him, please go check out his account. He has an incredible layout, which I think you really enjoy. The addition of the scenery definitely makes a huge improvement to the layout. As you can see, I've added grass mats, some dirt mats as you see here in front of these buildings, and sand mats around other ones. There are more trees, more ground cover, and I've added a simulated roadway. I've also added matchbox cars, which I recently also discovered were made in 164th scale, the same scale as American Flyer. But as you can see, next to the Plasticville buildings, they just look a bit out of size or, or small. That's okay. I know they're the right scale nonetheless. So the Matchbox cars are from my original collection. It goes back to the late 60s and early 70s. So I've had them since I was pretty little. It's great that I get to get them out of the box and add them to the layout instead of just sitting around in a case. Well, that pretty much wraps up this layout tour and first ever layout update. I appreciate you tuning in. Hit that like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. Thanks again for joining. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.